obviously there's a power imbalance. Obviously, um, we have the ability to do a visit and go home and live in our comfortable lives in, in Israel and wherever we are from in the world. And I think because of that, we take our lead from the community. And when we plan actions or we plan work days, we do what is good for the community and what, and what they want because at the end of the day, they're the ones who live here and they're the ones who have to live with whatever implications there are. In late August, activists of the All That's Left Collective and Allies were invited by the community of Umm al-Khir, a Palestinian village in the South Hebron Hills. On their way, the Israeli military stopped the bus together with several other buses of Breaking the Silence that were heading to the same area in solidarity with the Ta'ayush activists who had been violently attacked by settlers the previous week. And right now, as we were passing this juncture, the army stopped us in here in the occupied West Bank. And I've also stopped two Breaking the Silence buses. Um, so there's a general closure on the area and a disallowal to enter into the occupied territories, into the South Hebron Hills. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> שהוא נולד מתקנות החירום של המנדט הבריטי. אוקיי. Okay. למה הם נכתבו? כדי למנוע מפליטים יהודיים שבורחים מאירופה במלחמת העולם השנייה לעלות לארץ ישראל. In general, there's a crackdown on voices of political dissent, like breaking the silence, like voices in, in all that's left that are critical of occupation. Um, so this is part of a larger pattern and mostly indicates a small glimpse of what Palestinians experience. The lack of freedom of movement, the lack of ability to just conduct and facilitate themselves in their daily lives, um, and the inability to build partnerships that are prosperous for peace and justice here. After an hour of waiting at the roadblock, the bus of all that's left was allowed to pass and joined the Palestinian activists in Om al Khair for a tour around their community. 90% of the houses here is have a demolition order. They're following every new project which we do here, like the bees, like the greenhouse, like the new houses for the people. Any building here is targeted by the civil administration and we're afraid from demolition every day. The demolition is following us and the demolition is it's our nightmare. Official organizations and international bodies are reluctant to take a stance in the South Hebron Hills. Their support is usually confined to humanitarian assistance while they refrain from political statements. The organizations, they don't do anything here. They, they can do a lot of things. For example, after any demolition process, they can support anyone, you know, to build a simple house. The UN just, you know, helps with some, you know, a little bit meals every three months. But the people here, they don't need food. They need like a shelter to protect them. They don't care about Area C. They, they, want, they, they don't want, you know, to put themselves, you know, in the political issues. And, you know, they don't want to get blamed from Israel. All, all of them are scared from nothing. Grassroots organizations and informal collectives such as All That's Left and Ta'ayush, on the other hand, rely on direct action and personal relations with the Palestinian communities. All the time we need people here, we need activists to be here just, you know, to carry our message. When, when, when we face the first demolition, you know, demolition process in 2007, uh, no one knew about that. No one, you know, heard about that. Both sides acknowledge the influence of the Jewish diaspora in Israeli politics, as well as the special role of Israeli activists in a joint struggle against the occupation. Obviously, Birthright and other Hasbara programs are doing an excellent job in hiding the occupation, but like that's why we're here to like counterbalance that. I think the Jewish diaspora has a strong influence on Israel. Um, without Jewish diaspora money, um, Israel has a big problem. The diaspora angle of resistance is connecting Jews from around the world in the struggle to end the occupation. Um, and I think that ultimately it's going to take the work of Israeli activists, of Palestinian activists, and international activists to create change here. If you are a Jewish, you can help. If you are an Israeli person and Jewish in the same time, you will help more. The police, the army, the civil administration will not treat them, will not treat them as a Palestinian. If they want and they work hard, they will, they will, I'm sure about this, they will prevent the, the demolition, or at least delay the demolition. And also, for example, the shepherd of Omar Khair, like, if, if they have Israeli, you know, citizens with them, they will not, you know, escape from the soldiers. At least, at least, the Israeli people speak Hebrew. When we talk with the police or with the settlers, they, they will translate. The people who live here tell us that there's an advantage to having people from outside who are able to come with it when there's, um, to build relationships and to build solidarity, and that also then when there are 
difficult moments when the army shows up that we are committed to coming back here and not just coming to sort of on a tour this day, but that this is a relationship and when they need us, we'll come. But what kind of relation do the Israeli, the Palestinian and the international Jewish activists really have? Yeah, it's a very, it's a complicated position to know that at the end of the day, I can go back to Jerusalem where I live, which is not true for the people who live here. If, uh, if, if, if you are Israeli citizen, and you know, you have the Israeli ID, what will happen to you? Nothing, really. It's hard, but I think the important thing is that we keep coming back also, that we keep being like a constant in their lives, that they didn't know that we're not just coming here to like have a f happy fun time, but also when things get tough, that like they know that when rocks get thrown at them and they want international and Israeli support that we will come or that we will do our very best to come at least. And the problem all the time, you know, the people, okay, we are in solidarity with Omar Khair, we are, we are, we are, we are. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, no one of them came while at the demolition process. I, I, I didn't remember I saw anyone from all that's left, for example, in, here in any demolition process. Whether trying to affect policymakers abroad or engaging in direct action on the ground, still a lot needs to be done in order to create a strong and meaningful coal resistance. Mm -hmm.